I am now going to tell you about an instrument that is a very very simple instrument yet a very important one and has many applications. That instrument is the hydrometer. Now what is the application of a hydrometer? A hydrometer is an instrument which is used for measuring the relative density of a liquid directly. Now we have studied that the relative density of any particular liquid can be mathematically found out with a formula. The hydrometer ensures that no formula needs to be used. Through certain markings which are present on the sides of the hydrometer, the relative density of a liquid can be directly read. So let us see how a hydrometer functions. The hydrometer is basically nothing but a test tube in the shape as you can see and the bottom of the test tube is filled with lead shots. Now the amount of lead shots in a particular hydrometer remains the same always. Now the purpose of filling the bottom with lead shots is to ensure that when the hydrometer is dipped in a liquid it remains straight. It doesn't sway or fall to any side. Now let's say the hydrometer is dipped in these two liquids. Liquid 1 and liquid 2. So when the hydrometer is dipped in liquid 1, it is immersed till a length L1 below the surface of the liquid. And when it is dipped in liquid 2, it has been immersed for a height of L2 beneath the surface of the liquid. So as you can clearly see from the diagram, L1, that is from this point to this point on the hydrometer, is less than L2 that is from this point of the hydrometer to somewhere on the stem of the hydrometer. So now let us find out how we can verify the working principle of a hydrometer. So let us see what is happening in each of these liquids when the hydrometer has been immersed. So let us take the case of the first liquid. The first liquid we consider is water. So when the hydrometer has been immersed in water, the length of the hydrometer immersed is L1. Now it has been given to us the area of cross section of the test tube is A and the density of water is rho 1. Now if the area of cross section is A and the length that has immersed inside is L1, what can we say about the volume of water that has been displaced? The volume of water that has been displaced is equal to the volume of the body that has been submerged according to Archimedes principle. So that is equal to A into L1. Thus the volume of water displaced is A into L1. Now how can we find out the weight of the water displaced? The weight of displaced water can be easily found out from the volume. That would be a into L1, that is the volume, into the density of water, that is rho 1, into acceleration due to gravity g. Volume into density gives us the mass and mass into acceleration due to gravity gives us weight. Thus, A into L1 into rho 1 into g gives us weight of the water displaced. Now what else does Archimedes principle tell us? It tells us that since the body is floating, the weight of the loaded test tube has to be equal to the weight of water displaced in order for the test tube to float. So we can say that weight of the loaded test tube is equal to A into L1 into rho 1 into G. So weight of the loaded test tube is given by this equation and we call it equation 1. In a similar manner, we find out what is the weight of the loaded test tube when it is placed in liquid 2. So now we consider what happens in liquid 2. We have taken liquid 2 as oil and as you can see inside oil the length of the hydrometer or the test tube submerged is equal to L2. So now we consider again that the area of cross section of the tube is A and density of liquid that is oil in this case is rho 2. So again we calculate the amount of liquid or the volume of liquid that has been displaced. That will be equal to 
a into l2 because a into l2 is the volume of the hydrometer that has been submerged and by archimedes principle this will be equal to volume of the liquid that gets displaced so that is equal to a into l2 so now how can we find out the weight of liquid that has been displaced the weight of the liquid that has been displaced is equal to a into l2 that is the volume into rho 2 that is the mass of the liquid displaced into g that gives me the weight of liquid displaced so now according to archimedes principle the weight of the liquid displaced will be equal to the weight of the hydrometer submerged why because even in this case the test tube of the hydrometer that is this object is floating inside oil so what can i say i can say that weight of the loaded test tube is equal to weight of liquid displaced and this is equal to a into l2 into rho2 into g so now i call this equation 2 now obviously since there has been no addition or removal of lead shots from the hydrometer the weight of the loaded test tube will be same in both the cases that is when it is immersed in oil as well as when it is immersed in water thus weight of the loaded test tube being same for both the cases we equate equations 1 and equations 2 now as you can see over here a and g are common on both sides of the equation so we can cancel them and we are left with l1 into rho1 equals l2 into rho2 so l1 into rho1 equals l2 into rho2 now if i rearrange this equation what will i get i bring l2 to this side by cross multiplication and rho1 to the other side so i get l1 by l2 is equals rho2 by rho1 now how can i write this this l1 is nothing but the length immersed in water divided by l2 that is the length immersed in oil likewise rho2 is the density of oil divided by density of water that is rho1 thus i can write length immersed in water by length immersed in oil equals density of oil by density of water now let's say we keep the length immersed in water the same and density of water will remain constant and we change liquids that is we change this liquid from oil to some other liquid we will find that if length immersed in oil increases or length immersed in any other liquid increases then in order to maintain the equality of this particular equation the numerator over here will have to decrease because if this is increasing the denominator over here it means that the entire fraction is decreasing in value because the numerator remains constant so in order to maintain the equality the numerator on the other side will have to decrease that is the density of whichever liquid we are considering will have to be less so what does this mean this means that more length that is immersed in a particular liquid less will be its density conversely if the length immersed in the particular liquid is less then more will be its density so what can we conclude we can conclude that length immersed in any liquid is inversely proportional to the density of the liquid thus l is inversely proportional to density or in other words l is directly proportional to 1 upon rho where rho indicates the density of a particular liquid and this is the principle on which the hydrometer works so in this case since l1 is less than l2 or in other words the hydrometer has immersed in liquid 2 that was oil 
more than liquid 1 that is water the density of liquid 1 that is water is greater than that of liquid 2 that is oil and this is how with the help of a hydrometer one can easily calculate the relative density now let us find out some commercial applications of the hydrometer one of the commercial applications of the hydrometer is in the form of an instrument known as the lactometer now the lactometer is an instrument which is used to determine the purity of milk it determines how pure or un impure the milk is now the sides of the lactometer are graded as you can see from 1.035 to 1.015 from bottom to top now 1.035 corresponds to pure milk and 1.015 which is very close to the relative density for water corresponds to water or impure or diluted milk so now let us see what happens when we place this in pure milk now pure milk usually has a relative density somewhere in the region 1.03 to 1.035 that is in between these two points so when the lactometer is immersed in milk if it gets immersed to a point that lies somewhere in between these two regions it means that the milk is pure now what do you think will happen if it gets immersed to a greater length it means that the density of that particular liquid which we are considering as milk is less or in other words it means that the milk is not pure it has been diluted with water and if it gets immersed to a point anywhere in between 1.02 and 1.015 it means that the milk being considered is very very impure or absolutely dilute and we can say for all practical purposes that it is more water than milk now commercially a lactometer comes in this particular form so it is more easy and more comprehensible for regular customers to use the lactometer the lactometer is marked as m and w from bottom to top and in between there are markings in percentages 75 50 and 25 indicating the purity of milk when the lactometer is immersed in milk it immerses to a point that lies somewhere in between 75 and m it means that the milk is pure now more the lactometer immerses it means that the level of liquid reaches somewhere in between 75 and 50 or 50 and 25 so it means that there is a gradual decrease in the density of milk or a gradual increase in the impurity so m indicates pure milk and if a point reaches where the lactometer is submerged till point w it means it is completely water there is almost little or no milk present in the liquid that we have considered now the hydrometer is also used in another application that is the acid battery hydrometer now as you can see the acid battery hydrometer consists of these many parts what is the utility of an acid battery hydrometer the acid battery hydrometer is used to check the concentration of sulfuric acid in the acid battery now where are acid batteries normally used they are used most commonly in vehicles like cars etc so in order to check whether the battery still has some life left in it an acid battery hydrometer is used so let us find out the working principle of the acid battery hydrometer now the acid battery hydrometer also has certain markings on the stem let us say that this is the acid battery hydrometer it will have certain markings on the stem from 1.1 to 1.3 that is the lower mark will be at the top and there will be many more marks or gradations in between and at the bottom will be 1.3 lead shots will be placed at the bottom of the hydrometer now the normal relative density of acid in a fully charged battery is roughly between 1.25 to 1.3 so let us say 1.25 is somewhere over here now when this hydrometer is immersed in the sulfuric acid 
if it is immersed till a point that lies somewhere in between these two points, it means that the battery is fully charged and it has a working life left. However, if the relative density is less than 1.2, that is, let's say, somewhere at this point, if the hydrometer gets immersed till this point, it would mean that the density has decreased and the battery needs to be charged. And if the relative density is less than 1.1, that is, if it gets immersed till some point that lies above 1.1, it means that the battery has become completely useless and it is time to get a new battery.